In Revelation chapter 13, we read of that first beast, that political beast emerging, and we can read of it in Daniel 7 as well. It has seven heads and ten horns, and those ten horns are how we know that it doesn't happen until the beginning of the five months because the ten horns are part of Daniel's fourth beast, that supernatural beast, because the little horn, Satan's role of Antichrist, comes from that fourth beast, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. It's supernatural, and that's what the holdup is as far as the one world political system is concerned. And it receives a deadly wound after which Satan appears as the false Christ, that little horn. And if we go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, it reads, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, because he is the dragon. The dragon is one of Satan's names, as we know from Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. 12 9 of Revelation. And let's read what that says. And the great dragon was cast out after the war in heaven, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. Underline that. Into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. So after Satan is cast out of heaven unto the earth, that's Daniel's fourth beast, the supernatural, with the ten horns that you can read of in Daniel chapter 7. And this is the woe of the fifth trumpet. Five is grace in biblical numerics. And you have to understand that we are in the grace period. And the fifth trumpet is sounding, but the woe of the fifth trumpet has yet to occur. That's what begins the five months. And that first beast, that political beast, having seven heads, seven dominions, seven mountains, and ten horns. Those ten kings that reign one hour with the beast, five months. And we know from Revelation chapter 9 that the locust army, the fallen angels, the supernatural, are only on earth for five months. As it reads in Revelation chapter 9 and verse 5, and to them it was given that they should not kill them. They don't kill people physically, but spiritually. Now, there's only one army that doesn't physically kill people, and it's this army of deception. And you'll have the first three stages, in my opinion, in the first two and a half months, that first half hour, during the woe of the fifth trumpet, and then... The second woe occurs that we read of in Revelation 13, 11, when Satan appears. That's the woe of the sixth trumpet. And as you can see in Revelation chapter 9, if you were to go to verse 12, one woe is passed, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. The woe of the fifth trumpet is passed, but the five months continue on because that fifth trumpet and the first four trumpets continue to sound just as you see in Daniel chapter 3. It's all six instruments sounding at the same time. That's when the herald cries to all the people to worship the image Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But the three Hebrew children, a type of God's election, and actually God's election, but they're there as a type letting you know how it'll happen. They refuse to worship this image and they're thrown into the fiery furnace. But it doesn't even singe them, and Christ is there to guide them through it. So that fire, smoke, and brimstone, which issues out of the mouths of Satan's army, the locust army, that you'll see written of in Revelation chapter 9, won't hurt you if you have the seal of God in your forehead. It's even written in verse 4 of chapter 9, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. It's an army of deception, and I think that's pretty clear. So continuing on, after you see the first woe passing, one woe is passed, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter, it goes into the sixth trumpet, the second woe, and the beginning of the fourth and final stage of the locust army, the consumer stage. And the six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the six angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed 
which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen, as horsemen so shall they run, as it's written in the book of Joel concerning the locust army, were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Not literally, this is deception. By these three was the third part of the men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. And you'll see a parallel with the sixth vial. If you go over to Revelation chapter 16 to read of the sixth vial, you'll see that right after the fifth vial, which is the deadly wound, this is when Satan appears, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Six seal, six trumpet, six vial. That's when Satan appears as the false Christ, with those two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, they're Satan's unholy trinity, for they are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, it's global, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty, Armageddon, that is to say. And behold, Christ interjects here, behold, I come as a thief. This isn't me, in other words, this is the false Christ. Blessed is he that watcheth, and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And to be made naked means to be deceived, and a Christian's righteous acts are what make up their fine linen that they wear in heaven. But if a Christian begins to worship the devil, they're no longer a Christian, they're a Satan worshiper. So that lets you know who that third are that are slain spiritually by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone, which issues out of the mouths of Satan's army. Three unclean spirits like frogs, fire, smoke, brimstone. So you have a pattern of three going on here. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. It's deception. If you don't have that seal of God in your forehead, if you don't know what the truth is, you're going to be deceived, period. If you don't know that the false Christ appears in Jerusalem before the true Christ returns, for their power is in their mouth, because it's an army of deception. They're not allowed to kill people physically, you see. And in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So this covers the other religions, okay? Christianity isn't a religion, it's a reality. And this third being spoken of can only be the Christians. That's the only way you can die spiritually. And notice that the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, the fire, smoke, and brimstone, they were already dead. They didn't have eternal life abiding within them in the first place. So it's common sense at the end of the day. And notice that the fire, smoke, and brimstone are called plagues. And the sixth plague, the sixth vial, speaks of three unclean spirits coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And again, that's Satan's unholy trinity. And those four angels, which are bound in the Euphrates, are the negative to the positive that is God's four living creatures that surround his throne. So what that's telling you there is that's when Satan appears as the false Christ and sets up his throne, claiming to be Christ returned with two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, because he is the dragon. And again, for every positive, there's a negative. Our Father has a triune Godhead 
and it consists of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And since Satan wants to play God, he wants to be God. As it says in Isaiah chapter 14, Satan said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God and be like the Most High. That's what he always wanted to do. So everything he does is a cheap fabric imitation of our Father's pattern. Every stitch of it is a ripoff. So it's real easy to figure it out when you become aware of your Father's Word. So with the positive, you have our Father's triune Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and His throne is surrounded by those four living creatures you can read of in Revelation chapter 4. The negative is Satan's cheap fabric imitation of the triune Godhead, the unholy trinity, his three offices of the dragon, the false prophet, his role of Antichrist, and the beast by process of elimination, his evil spirit, which is what causes his one world system to operate because of the mark of the beast in the foreheads of those who are deceived into worshiping Satan. Not the Holy Spirit that's within those participating in our Father's kingdom and in heaven now and Christians on earth now. The Holy Spirit will speak through God's elect whenever they're delivered up after that six trumpet sounds and they refuse to worship the devil because they know that's who it is. They'll be just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that we were talking about earlier. They'll refuse to worship the image, which is an image of Satan, obviously, I really don't see how it makes any sense that the ultimate egomaniac, Satan, would come to earth demanding that everyone worship him as God, performing miracles, would say, hey, go build a statue and go worship that. No, he wants all the worship for himself because that's how he kills people spiritually and that's why one of his names is death. And God's elect will be delivered up to death, that is to say Satan, they're not going to be killed that's just one of his names. That's what that means. And at that time, the Holy Spirit will speak through them. So there's the positive, but the negative is Satan's evil spirit. And then you're talking about the mark of the beast in the foreheads of the people. And that image will be in their forehead as well. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 13 and verse 11 with that in mind. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, because he is the dragon. Notice he comes up out of the earth. Remember what I told you to underline in the beginning of this? In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So why does this beast come up out of the earth? Because he was cast out into the earth. But this happens at the woe of the sixth trumpet whenever he appears as the false Christ. You have to bear in mind that there are two and a half months between the point in time where he's cast out of heaven unto the earth and the point in time whenever he appears. Because there are three woe trumpets. And the woe of the fifth trumpet is when he gets cast out and you can read of that in detail in Daniel chapter 11, verses 21 through 30. Then in Daniel 11:31, you see the abomination of desolation mentioned. That's when he appears. And that's why Christ said, when you see the abomination of desolation written of by Daniel the prophet, let him that readeth understand, then let them which be in Judea, there he is giving you the geographical location, let them flee to the mountains get out of there whenever you see Satan appear as the false Christ because Jerusalem will be cleansed shortly thereafter. At the seventh trumpet, not one stone shall be left standing upon another. Verse 12, And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, the political beast, that's one of the horns, the governmental, the political, the other is the religious, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, now it gets religious, whose deadly wound was healed. And this is what heals that deadly wound to the political beast, is Satan's appearance as the false Christ. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. This is why they'll think that he's Christ returned, because he'll be performing miracles. All power and signs and lying wonders, as Paul wrote in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. 
which you need to become familiar with as well if you're not already. Paul says there, We're not going to gather back to Christ until the son of perdition sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. So there you have it right there. He couldn't make it any simpler. The gathering back to Christ will not transpire until the seventh trumpet after the son of perdition, which can only be one individual, Satan. He was given the death sentence in Ezekiel chapter 28. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast and the sight of that one world system, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Not make an image of the beast, but to the beast, okay? And what is he saying here? He's saying, make me king over you because I'm Christ returned is what he's saying to them. And they're going to believe it because they don't have the seal of God in their forehead. And they're going to receive that mark of the beast in their forehead, which is the deception. And there you have Satan's evil spirit within the minds of the people that make up the political beast. Okay, you can't have a government without people being involved in it. So that's how that works. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, delivered up to death, like we were talking about earlier. Death is one of his names. And how does he have power to give life unto the image of the beast? That word life is pneuma. That's spirit. What kind of spirit do you suppose Satan deals in? His evil spirit. So there you go. That's part of his unholy trinity, his evil spirit. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, in your mind. It's talking about being deceived into thinking that Jesus has returned and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Don't let it throw you that he's called a man. It doesn't mean he's human. He's called a man in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. It's no big deal. And his number is 603 score and 6. 666. When does Satan appear? The sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. So it's all very cut and dry. It's all very simple. We will not gather back to Christ until after the son of perdition sits in the temple of God. Now, what is the temple of God? It's the many-membered body. So he's going to be in their minds via his evil spirit. And that's how that's part of his unholy trinity, okay? And they make up that one world system. God's elect will have no part in it. They'll be delivered up for refusing to take part in it because they know that it's the devil. Very simple, very easy to understand. It's not a microchip. It's not some credit score number it's worshiping the devil and how the ins and outs of the economic system will be at that time are inconsequential it doesn't matter that's still not the mark the mark is in your forehead where your brain is it's how you believe because the seal of god is the opposite of the mark of the beast again for every positive there's a negative the positive is the seal of God, knowing the truth of God's word, all seven seals, whereby you're not deceived into taking the mark of the beast, which is the opposite, the deception. Both go in your forehead. Now, what is this in your right hand part? That's a figure of speech. It means what you do because of what you believe. If you have the seal of God in your forehead, then with your right hand, you're going to carry out the will of God because you are familiar with what that is. What's God's will? That all come to repentance and none should perish, as it's written in 2 Peter chapter 3. So because of what's in your mind, what's in your forehead, that's what you do with your right hand, so to speak. It's just a figure of speech. So the deceived masses will be helping Satan, thinking that he's Jesus, and helping him out with his work, doing his work for him, including delivering up those who refuse to worship him, God's elect, and they're supposed to because that's when they're delivered up to death. Death is one of Satan's names. That's not literal either. And that's when the Holy Spirit will speak through them in a language understood by whoever hears it. And you have a perfect example of that in Acts chapter 2. 
So there you have it. Very simple. Six comes before seven. More information at mark13records.com.